If, 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 if that's your friend and you're not in the house of God, well it's just a matter of time. <laughs> It'll catch up to you as well. If the righteous are, yes, so if the righteous are scarcely saved, where will the They have no chance. And by the way, devils have become very good at masking themselves. You wouldn't even know that someone has a devil. Don't say that if you're in agreement. We need a fast. This church, Vessel Church of Fellowship, we need a fast. Not just for the sake of we're fasting. We need to humble some pride. Because God he opposes the pride. One thing that God is going to say, okay, come on, let's have a fight. Against pride. God will deal with and help you with things. But when, when pride affronts God, the Bible says God resists the proud. He will stand up against them. Many people are losing their minds. Say to God, he's very carefully. I knew some people years ago, and I never ever thought years ago they would lose their minds. I never thought it. I did not think it. It wasn't. I lost it. No. I knew some friends from school who ended up killing their mothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> killed shopkeepers. <laughs> we don't know what horrible people we can become when we get older. It's true. When they're young, they look so. I'm sure that when Hitler was young, he looked cute. <laughs> Anybody who's sober said, look how cute he is. Nobody ever knew that he would grow to become this monster that killed millions of people. We don't know what we're capable of sometimes. We don't know it. But God knows it, that's why he's helping us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God knows it. Praise God, God knows it. Thank you, Lord. And that's why the Bible says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Sometimes we go through, we don't know why we're going through, so why be why be God says, relax. <laughs> You're going through because I'm taking you through. If I don't put you through this, you don't know what monster you become. Every day we're going through, as we read last week also, all things work together for the good to them that love God, even them who are the called according to his purpose in Christ. And it goes on to say, read the next verse, I'm doing this to conform you to the image of Christ. It all makes sense. All the ups and downs and the sides that we go through. It's like we can't always figure it out. God's humbling us. It's a mighty 
Lord, would you say it's a mighty hand? Well, it's a mighty hand we've got to humble ourselves under. And in due time, God will exalt you, reward you. He'll reward you. Reward your spiritual faith, not a Lamborghini. He'll reward you. You become more spiritual. Praise God. As I said to you, fasting is so key. I want to show you, so I'll tell you why what happened with this scene. Fasting is so key. We said in the Old Testament, since the Esther read it today, Josiah, he humbled himself. Esther, a whole nation was about to be obliterated and they went on a fast. Some of them went on a fast and they saved the whole nation. Because in their fast, God heard them. They were praying. But the prayer was not complete until they fasted. And God heard them. Esther, I mean Ezra, so that they wouldn't use any help from anyone else. They already told the king that our God is an awesome God. He reigns, is powerful. He's mighty. Now they've got the enemy around them. Should we call the king? No. I'm not going to give him help. I'm just said our God is an awesome God. You see, sometimes in our life, we don't, we're not feeling it. <laughs> and we want to seek worldly help. <laughs> but then you say, hold on a second. No, we just say, oh, God is an awesome God. But you're, you're not going to be settled until you fast. That's when the remembrance and the, the power of your God sets in your heart again when you fast. They went on a fast. You know what? They trusted their God. So, it's one thing for you to pray. But you, you still don't feel it. Nothing's happening. You still say, oh, we, we can't have a king to help us. Lord, help us. They fasted and they prayed. And you see, you see, that's a stronghold. That's a, that's a stronghold that's that's hovering that, that that wants to penetrate into Ezra's camp and wants to destroy Ezra's camp. What was the key thing they did? Fast. Remember during those days, God was angry with a wicked nation. And you hear it, it's a wicked nation. It's not a good, it's not a good nation that was just that struggling. It's a wicked nation, period. And he says, 40 days, they finish. Jonah can't tell them, no. Jonah goes his own way. I tell you, Jonah, you must go and tell them. I want to show something here. So eventually Jonah got it. I mean, after being in hell, more or less. He gets it. And he goes and he tells the nation. And the wicked nation fasts and were animals. And God heard them. One of the most wicked kings, his name was Ahab. He was wicked at this time. Please remember, he was wicked at this time. He was wicked at this time. And he done wickedness. And God says, I'm coming down on you, Ahab. So the prophet goes to tell Ahab, God's coming down hard on you. What does Ahab do? He's a wicked king. He humbles himself, which is equivalent to fasting. He afflicted his soul. <laughs> and even the afflicted his soul, God heard him. Oh my. God should be hearing pretensive. Well, at that time, Ahab thought, well, I am. But then he messed up again and went the other way. But for the time that you are, God will hear you. Because anytime God senses humility in the air, this is cute. You know, God lives by his word. His own word. He will move by his own word. He will move. So when he sees that someone has got something like that, they, they feel something here. 
even God will come. And God will hear. Ahab is a wicked king, please. It's not that God accepted Ahab's whole being, what he represented. God, just for that moment, you humble yourself. God will hear you. Just show you he's a fair God. He's a fair God. So, most wicked king, one of the most wicked king up to that time anyway. And humble yourself. Sack off. That's all that God heard him. It's difficult. That's where God's children. God said, look, look at this king. Look at this king. This king who won't hear no one. When he heard this woman who kept coming to him, Avenger Madison, Avenger Madison, I'm going to get weary of this. If I don't do this, ah, oh, this woman's going to kill me. Even though I don't respect God. But he hears her. God says, that's what a wicked king does. How much more of me? That's what I'm saying. If you don't know God, if you don't know what this is all about, you're going to miss out. New Testament, we cross over to, we read all these scriptures last week. They're sending out Paul and Barnabas on an evangelical ministry. This is, this is, this is big stuff. And go and read Acts chapter 13. First of all, they were, they were praying and fasting, and God came. And before they sent them out, they fasted again. Just, just so that you don't despise fasting. This kind goeth out only by one. Prayer and fasting. They're going to deal with some serious strongholds. I remember a particular time in my life when I was praying and fasting. This is not to boast, but it's just to show you. Even for me, it's happened. I've got a bit lazy and I reject it in Jesus' name. Amen. I know it's only me who's got lazy. We will do next exploits, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> and I rejected it. I said, look how passionate. I sometimes look at my, my old self in terms of before. And I'm ashamed. I was having to do this. I haven't eaten too much food. <laughs> Barely got bigger. <laughs> Relaxing a bit too much. I mean, I looked, at our, I looked at us five years ago. Yes. And we look at us five years later, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what's happened to us? Easy. They say couch, couch potato. <laughs> if, you, if you cut off the couch, the imprint. <laughs> We've left an imprint in the couch. It, 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 the couch knows us now. It knows when we're going to come and sit down. It's become a common thing now. We become very lazy. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that sometimes? Yes. yes. Amen. Easy. Things look a bit drudgery. We just concentrate on what's going on in our lives. We're not concentrating on how great God is. Amen. Too busy to have to things going on in my life. Not how great God is. So, Paul and Barnabas sent out. One of the things to approve you as a minister of God, one of the things you've got to do is fast. Paul fasted. In my fastings, he said. Not just when I'm, when in the times when I've been robbed of eating and drinking, I didn't do that voluntarily. But that happened, that's part of it. But also, times when it was voluntary, I fasted. I made a decision to fast. It's one of the things that proved in the ministry of God. One of the things. You can't miss it out. There's a, there's a fast that God desires. We'll probably look at that next week or so. The fast that God desires. Isaiah chapter 58. It's the fasting that should produce humility so that we can see clearer God's vision. Because when we don't, we only see our vision. We, we are so... Help me say it, please. Don't we get so spoiled when we're not fasting and we don't... When we're just so stuck in our own light and what we want to do and how we want things to be done. How are we so spoiled? You don't want to say amen to this one, I know. It's too hot, it's hurting. It hurts me too, it hurts us all. It hurts, we get too complacent. It's like we're there. 
So I, I'm saved. So I got this minute, I'm really cussing them now. Come on, bring this up. Get up! 15 minutes later. Half an hour later. Get up, devil! Jesus, the disciples can't do it. They gave up. What happened, Peter? I don't know. John! What happened to this? Let's go to Jesus. So, we're going to okay? Jesus, why could we do it? What happened? Because of your unbelief. You got to deal with that. But they show you how belief is expressed. Prayer and fasting. Spiritual exercise. I'm going to show you that in a second. Spiritual exercise, very important. Where did we get to on Matthew 17? Let me just quickly finish on this season. Now the only problem with this season is it doesn't like changes. He doesn't like changes. If he's going to get his sandwich, it's going to be the exact right pepper, the exact right salt. You can't go one grain more. <laughs> That's it. He tells the man. No more, no more. That's it. No more, no more. He doesn't like changes. A lot of old system people don't like changes. A lot of stuff they do is repetitive. Yeah. He often throws himself in the fire and in the water. It's planned. Mm -hmm. It's strategic. Mm -hmm. It's strategic. For them, change is a challenge. But change is something we need as Christians. We are changed as we behold Christ. And if you don't like change as a Christian, you're done. We need to change. Amen. And my, when you look at what we're changing from to and from to, you look back and you're glad you changed. Yes. <laughs> you are glad you changed. Yes. We need to change. They don't like change. Even a little change, they can't break their routine. There's probably different types of autism, so but generally they don't like it. You know what? This, this skillful drawer is so skillful. He's got an MBE, he's been awarded, he's been crowned. He's got an MBE. How do you get that? You can't just get that. You, you've got to be someone, some, you've got to do something very important. For you have got MBE, member of the British Empire. Um, he has his own gallery that attracts many. He's a savant, as I said earlier, an individual with an island of talent. Lead to people we are. Amen. Men, we think the devils just do destructive stuff. They also do artistic stuff. And they come hard to do the text. You can never call this a devil, you irresponsible Christians. That's just foolishness. We know our God. We know what the word says. And we believe God. Amen. Amen. We believe God. Amen. You tell me, how multi talented can you be that you can look just 10 minutes? You can look at a whole palace and be in the whole palace for 10 minutes and draw it to detail. No, he's just extra, just extra talented. There are devils that I hope with a lot of talented people today. Yes. And the last thing that anyone would want to call it is a devil possession. Some people are in the possession of the devil. They're in his possession. They're in his custody. So, it's been given possible to I love the way he said this, because he just coined it for me. An independent life. An 
yet this is the same thing that Christ has said to his disciples. You can't do this because of unbelief. Life now. No longer relying on me. I've got to, I've got to wrestle with you guys that I keep you at a place where it hurts the most. And you develop a limp. And you know from now on, don't trust your own strength. Complacency is our own strength. God says, for one second, don't go quiet. Always be alert. When it's God says, be sober, be vigilant, don't look at it lightly. Because the moment you look at it lightly, you'll suffer the consequences. You probably be sweaty, sweaty, wondering why. You'll be frustrated because it's now God, it's now your own strength. God's strength is not there. <laughs> you're thinking on your own right now. And you're doing everything you're doing on your own. You've got, we've got to learn to hold on to God. I'm going to show you how. In a second, now we hold up to God. Okay, so it's a kind of juxtaposition, isn't it, of their talent against their disability. Their, their disability is acceptable. It's not called a disability anymore. Autism has now been crowned. Jenny's multiple personality. These devils that have invaded her body. Come on man, they're devils. Have you seen the thing? Have you seen it? <laughs> Who's seen it? Amen. What are those devils? Amen. Those are devils have now been crowned. Been given a voice when Jesus told them many times, shut up. They're now on the witness stock. Testifying. Speaking for the world against Jesus. Yeah. That's why there's going to be a great persecution soon. Homosexuality is not a dysfunctionality. It's normal. We, there's gay genes. <laughs> Very well colored. <laughs> there's gay genes. I, I challenge the doctor who has found the gay genes to come up and replicate those gay genes. Show it to us and show us how it works. If you dare, hmm. amidst other wise scientists as well, hmm. just just bring up your idea and show us. If you find a group of scientists who are saying it, it's because they are part of the devil's plan. Yes. Yeah. They've been possessed. Yes. Or some of them, if they haven't been possessed, they're scared of losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've, got to, we've got to speak the truth. Speak the truth. They don't want to close churches like this down, but that's all right. As long as what we're saying is what God says. Yes. We know that in this situation that we're in, in this wilderness, we have to speak our way out of the wilderness. We've got to say it is written. Yes. No matter what you're saying, no matter what scientific evidence you say you have, God said, yes. Thou shalt not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We've got to speak what God says. We're we'll becoming friends with devil possessed scientists. Oh, really? Oh, that's so interesting. It doesn't interest me. I want to know what it is. God's told me, why should we take on another witness? If we believe the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Amen. In other words, if men's witness seems so loving, but God never said it, you know who to believe. Yeah, you know who to believe. You know who to believe. We believe God. Amen. So, what is what happened? Did we finish off? What verse will we on then? I'm going to take you to a um, particular verse and then we're going to end. Not really started, but God's good. <laughs> we're going to take this slowly a bit, but uh, I think we'll have one or two more and then we'll finish this series and then move on to the next. So, what verse do we get to? 19, 1, 2, 3, go. You see, apart. Yes? Now that's why it's interesting. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, okay? Your faith, as we said, must be the right faith. It must be a living faith. It can't be the dead faith. Faith without works is dead. 
can't be the dead faith. It's got to be a living faith. The reason why you need a living faith is because, or the reason why you're, you must have faith as a grain of a mustard seed is because there is potential in it. I'm going to tell you something in a second. It's called our lust, which also has some type of potential. You need something that's living to deal with something else that has potential in it as well. If you don't deal with that thing, if your faith is not living, if it's not a growing faith, you're going to have problems. Your faith will come to a place where it can't work. It can't work. I'm so glad that one of the things that Jesus is doing for us is praying that our faith fell not. I couldn't even start to imagine what would happen if the faith fell. I don't think we really thought about it. What would happen if your faith failed? It's a bit like when your heart beats. Stops. So Christ has prayed that our faith failed not. Praise God. I can guarantee that we're still here because Christ has prayed. Amen. <laughs> he prayed. Okay, so. Because I believe. The faith going must have what you shall what? Think about this mountain. Now, you have thoughts and say, hmm. No, no, you, you look at this mountain and you say, in your head, I wonder. Oh, I wonder if this mountain can go. You know, you know what people do? They're departing from God. Some people don't like what this means for this book. They don't like what it means for this mountain to go. That's why a lot of people today are saying, uh, one woman was said she, she told us she'd lost her, her sister. And so, so, so she really talked about her life. It was quite depressing. You know what we said to her, we'll pray for you. She said, no, no, don't pray for me. No, 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 don't pray for me. <laughs> Throwing back. <laughs> what do I say here? <laughs> she she stopped me. Full stop. Yeah. I said, no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll pray. No, she don't pray for me. <laughs> then when you were there, Sister Liz, you said you had. Don't pray for me. I was horrified. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you guys don't pray for me. <laughs> I said, okay. I'm just bobbing my head, trying to. I have to believe what I've just said. <laughs> so, because this world doesn't want to be, they don't want to be healed. They prefer the madness. She loves that life of the depression that she's in. She doesn't want to get rid of this mountain. Some people are quite happy with the mountain being there. Don't touch my mountain! Leave it alone. We are not. Amen. We're against it. Amen. So we must talk our way out of the wilderness. We must do what? Say. If you shall, you shall say unto this mountain, do what? I rebuke you mountain. You stand to this mountain. Just wait a second. I'm going to get my medication. <laughs> Now, I'm not, we're not against medication. Some medications are useful, please. Really, some medications are useful. But this world has taken it to the extreme. Let me just get my medication. I'm coming back, and then I believe everything will be all right. Temporal reform. Which just allows the devil more space to get more and more weak to Yeah, good. I'll come back to you when I'm ready. Remove hands to the place and it, 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 it will not remove. And it shall remove. It shall remove what? Nothing. Not some things. Nothing. Nothing shall what? Be impossible. Be impossible unto you. How be it? There's a clause, a big clause. This kind. Going not out, but by prayer and fasting. Turn to. Turn to. Um, Romans chapter 6, just sort of introduce this, and the next time we can um, come to it. Romans chapter 6, in Jesus' name, amen.
Now there are three things that we're going to look at in Romans chapter 6 when we come to it in the uh, next week. And it is, and these three things are very important for us. As Christian, as Christians, you need to be aware of these three things in Romans 3. This is the reason why a lot of us can't seem to conquer and move on and sort of live our lives more abundantly. Okay, number one, the first thing you need to jot down is that we need to know. The second thing is we need to reckon. And the third thing is that we need to act. Know, reckon, act. Look at verse, Romans chapter 6 verse 3 please. Just read verse 3 for me. What does it say? What does it say? No, me not. You know, that's said three times in this chapter. In other words, you need to understand the mercy and the grace of this great salvation. You need to know what you've got. You know, you need to know about what it means that you, you have died with Christ and the risen with him. The first problem is that people don't know. You're going to see that this is exactly the same pattern as well for faith. What faith is. Knowledge, belief, and trusting God, calling God. They can't, they can't call on one who they have not what? Believed. They can't believe on one who they have not what? Heard. Or they have knowledge of. Okay, so the trust is a call, yeah? So you can only call or trust in someone who you believe. And you can only believe in someone who you heard of. So you see how belief comes to hear. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what is written? The word of God. So Alright, so we, we, we must hear. We must that's the knowledge. We must believe. And we must then trust. All of that is faith. And the word has to be preached by a sent preacher. Has to be the word of God. To ignite and to inspire our faith. It's only God's word. So, no knowledge is the first thing. Consider is the second thing. Um, sorry, um, reckon. Which is second? Consider or accounting. Okay. So you will see how that plays out. And then the third thing is act because of your will. You know, here we've got basically your your mind, your emotions, and your will. You want to know. You've got to rank, belief, account, and then you've got to what? Act. to make a decision. It's all those three areas, isn't it, in our Christian life. So, God gives you something else to know now, not what you just want to know. And he gives you something else to believe now, not your own beliefs of your own, whatever you want to call it. And it also makes you act as well. Well, you've got to make this into act. Those three things are important. So you've got to know. So know ye not. Go on. As we finish. Knowledge is important. Ignorance is a killer. It's the greatest killer. Okay, so that's the first thing you've got to know. And that plays out over several verses. Okay? You've got to know. By revelation of God, you must know. Okay, 1 Corinthians 6, it says, What? Know ye not? Paul's always saying, don't you know? See, we, we lack knowledge about this great salvation. We don't understand the weight. And then we got the next thing is what? We've got to believe. We've got to believe. And the belief is it's almost like it goes a bit further. It goes to your feelings now. Feelings are usually impulsive. 
Okay, but when we let our feelings be taken by God, our feeling gives us confidence. In any situation, we reckon, we, we believe this is the case. No one can deter us from it. And then it goes on to say, or, or I, we count it like that. Then it goes on to say also as well about our will acting. We're going to see that in Romans 6 12. Look at Romans 6 11 first. Let's look at the um, reckoning. Let's see that. Go on. Likewise, what? Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but what? Alive unto God. I believe that. I believe that. I know it. I believe it. And then what is? What's the third one? Verse 12. Read verse 12. Let not, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, then you shall obey in your life. You've got to act. You must act. And next week we're going to come to that. So much just in those three things there. And we're going to, we're going to look at it um, in depth. And we're going to talk about how to pull away from sin. Okay, because we've got to make a decision. Lord, I'm moving away from this. And watch how God empowers you when he weakens you. When God weakens you, he will empower you. And you're going to live a fruitful life. Now, now we're supposed to present ourselves a living sacrifice. You know, you know what happens when people, it comes from the army, you present yourself for inspection. Right. Do I know? Do I really know this? Do I believe this? Do I reckon? And am I acting this? You present yourself a living sacrifice that, that's consecration. You are giving God your eyes. This is what we just read in Romans chapter 6 verse 12. You give God your eyes. You give God your ears. You give God your mind. You give God to every aspect of you. That's what we call cons consecration. You are willingly giving God that so that God can sanctify you to make you live a life that is an abundant life. Not just to have life, but to have it more abundantly. We're going to look at this um, next week and see how also evil plays in this. Uh, wherever good is, whatever I'll do good, there's a presence of evil because it's trying to stop you from the presence of God. So the evil is present with me. And we'll pick up on that next week in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good? All the time. Who would like to pray for us? Yes.